When driving the hypercar class in Le Mans Ultimate, the anti-roll bar system could be the easiest way to tweak the car's rotation to suit your driving style. And today, I'll show you how it works. So what does the anti-roll bar system do? In any kind of race car, whenever we turn the wheel, the weight from the car will shift to the side of the car that we turned in with. This shift in weight is often referred to as weight transfer or body roll. The job of the front and rear anti-roll bars is to lessen the effect of that weight transfer. Now the stiffness of these anti-roll bars can be changed by the driver on the fly, and the front and rear ARB can be customized separately to change their individual behavior. So why would we want to change the behavior of these anti-roll bars? Well, the way it works is the stiffer the ARB is, the less that the effect of the weight transfer will be when turning in for a corner. This will affect the grip of the front and the rear wheels, which then affects the rotation of the car. The stiffer front ARB gives us more stability when turning in for a corner, but also causes more understeer when turning in for that corner. Alternatively, when making the front ARB softer, it gives us less stability when turning in for a corner, but gives us more oversteer, which means a better rotation when turning in. These rules also apply to the rear ARB, which dictates the same behavior, but for the rear of the car and affects its behavior when exiting a corner rather than entering it. Now that we know how they work, here's a basic set of rules for how we should use them. If you're feeling too much understeer when turning in for a corner, lower the front ARB one click at a time until you get the rotation that you're looking for. If you feel the car feels too unstable and you're getting too much oversteer when turning in, increase the front ARB one click at a time until it feels less twitchy and easy to control. The same goes for our rear ARB. If you feel the rear is too loose when exiting a corner and getting back on the throttle, raise the rear ARB one click at a time until you feel it tighten up enough. And finally, if you feel the rear has too much understeer when exiting a corner, lower the rear ARB one click at a time until you get the rotation that you're looking for. Now let's look at the process for figuring out what ARB values work for our driving style. I'm gonna show you three laps here at Monza using the BMW. Now we're gonna use the default setup for the car and I'm gonna try and decrease my lap times by only changing the ARB values. First, we're gonna put the front ARB at the highest value of five in our MFD and leave the default rear ARB value of two. Now we get a lap time of 136.2 with a full tank of fuel. And during this lap, the main complaint I have is that the front of the car just isn't rotating enough whenever I turn in for a corner. Sure, it feels safe and stable, but that's at the cost of not having enough rotation. So what I do now is lower the front ARB value down to two in the MFD to try and encourage more rotation when turning in for a corner. Let's see the result.
Now we managed to shave off two tenths just by lowering the front ARB, and the car definitely has a lot more rotation now when turning in. What I did notice however is that the rear was a little too loose, especially in this Ascari section where I actually almost lost the rear and had to counter steer slightly to save it, costing me time. This kind of situation isn't ideal, especially in a race situation where it could happen lap after lap. So how do we fix this? Well, there's two ways we could go about this. First, I could just move the front ARB up to three or four. This would make the car more stable, but then I'd be sacrificing some of that rotation that I was looking for in the first place. But since it's the rear of the car that I'm having an issue with, instead I try moving the rear ARB up by one click to three to try and make it more stable on exit. Now let's see the results. So we managed to gain almost another two tenths in this lap thanks to the more stable rear end with a 135.7. And just like I thought would happen, that extra time came from how much more stable the car was through the Ascari section. Because the rear was more stable, it allowed me to keep a tighter line through the first half of Ascari, which then helped me line up a really good exit, gaining me one tenth from that corner alone. And what we found overall is that just from making a few slight adjustments to only our ARB settings, we managed to shave off almost half a second off of our original lap time. And now you can do the same. Load up a practice session at Monza with whatever car you like and just get a feel for how the car handles. Then make small adjustments to the anti-roll bars like I did here until you find a balance that suits your driving style. Well, that covers the anti-roll bar system for the hypercar class in Le Mans Ultimate. And if you have any further questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. But as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.